Clint Eastwood is a unique and even iconic Hollywood fixture for 70 years. 70 years, how amazing is that? Eastwood has acted, directed, composed film scores, and been a producer on a number of films. He really is a multi-generational talent. But there are only a few films of his that has a supernatural element to it. One of them is High Plains Drifter, and another is the wonderfully underrated Western Pale Rider. In this video, we're going to explore the film, Pale Rider, and unravel the mystery surrounding just who his character, the Preacher, really is. Pell Rider is unique for several reasons. First, it was one of the highest grossing westerns of the 1980s. Only Young Guns did better business. Secondly, it's surprising to know that he really only made one other western in the 1980s, and that is a film called Bronco Billy, which some people might argue is not even a western. Pell Rider is one of those films that really left an impression on me. While it resembles the 1953 classic Shane, it takes on a mystery and has a rough edge to it that really makes it stand out. When I saw it for the first time, I had not even seen Shane, so Pell Rider was this completely original film to me, and I loved it. The story takes place in a mining town in fictional La Hood, California in Carbon Valley, although the film was photographed in and around Sun Valley, Idaho, and in this fictional location in California, a ruthless and wealthy man named Coy La Hood dominates and terrorizes the poor miners in the area. A young girl named Megan Wheeler prays for her and her family to be delivered from La Hood and his goons after her little mining village has been raided and her dog killed. Whenever someone's dog is killed in a movie, I feel like it's this clear formula for some ass kicking. And that's exactly what happens. It's soon after this prayer that we see a lone figure atop a pale horse riding down through the mountains toward the mining town. The preacher has arrived to enact a revenge on the oppressors. Pell Rider is wonderful, and, and there's a bundle of reasons why. First, the photography is staggering. It, it almost feels like Eastwood just takes his camera and points it at the surrounding mountains, and we see, you know, the type of grandeur that is a staple of great westerns. Really, the cinematography by Bruce Surtees, who worked on a lot of Eastwood films, does great work. And it's not just landscapes. There's one shot of La Hood and Marshall Stockburn looking out a window that I just love. Another element of the film that I find compelling is the terror that permeates the poor miners. It's almost like this desperation. These are hopeful, but that they're desperate people. They want to strike it rich and find enough gold to rescue them from their poverty. And this desperation is felt throughout the film. And the mysterious preacher is like the salve to their struggle. But the film revolves really around Eastwood's preacher. As he sweeps down from the mountain, he saves, early on in the film, Michael Moriarty's character, who plays Hull Barrett, from a humiliating beating. In an age where we peddle like street attacks on social media for clicks, it feels good to watch a scene where the powerless are protected. Felt good in 1985, and it feels really good today. As the film progresses, the preacher helps the miners to gain confidence and come together as a community. It's fun and inspiring, but all the while the question grows, just who is the preacher? In the film, the tension mounts and the preacher is bribed by LaHood to be the town's preacher. He'll give him a church and some money. Of course, the preacher declines and negotiates a pretty decent deal for the poor miners to receive money for their claims, but of course the miners decline it. And then it's on. The Hood calls in Marshall Stockburn, played by John Russell, who was a six foot three former U.S. Marine who fought at the Battle of Guadalcanal in World War II. They they really don't make them like Russell anymore. And his character that he plays, Stockburn, and his deputies are terrifying and ruthless. And in one of the most memorable scenes of the film, they shoot to death a drunk miner named Spider Conway, who was, par uh, at one time, he was a partner of La Hood's. And they gun him down right in front of Conway's own sons. When that happens, the showdown is really set. And the mystery builds who is the preacher. Earlier in the film, the preacher washes up before dinner, and it is shown that he has six bullet holes in his back. Holes that most men would not survive. And when we get to the climax of the film, it's really one-sided. The preacher guns down really anyone that stands in his way. But it's still this mystery that drives it. Who is he? Who is the preacher? In the final confrontation with Stockburn, Stockburn exclaims over and over, You, like he knew him. The preacher guns him down. Who is the preacher? Eastwood rides off into the mountains without any explanation. There is no conversation <laughs> where he, he reveals exactly who he is. 
But as we wade through the ambiguity of the movie, we can make an educated guess. The preacher was killed by Stockburn. He puts the same pattern of bullet holes through Stockburn that are in his own body. He is something from the other side. And actually, Eastwood says it plainly in an interview that the preacher is out and out a ghost. But the film never says that. It's ambiguous. And it just rests in that mystery. Many stories and films, they have to tell us the mystery. They have to reveal the secrets. Pell Rider just shows us things. And really, it's a special Western because of that. And it's a special Western in a decade with so few of them. Let me know what you think. Where does Pell Rider rank in the Westerns of Clint Eastwood? And as always, thank you for living in the past with me.